Hi everybody, Karen here from tumblrscolor.co.uk. Thank you very, very much for joining me today. Uh, this is the card that I have for you today. It doesn't look particularly interesting. It's, you know, a bit of paper piecing going on, a um, bit of colouring in. But if I pull on this flap at the bottom, something magic happens. Up pops a little doggy. This is a variation on the pull tab slider card. Um, and uh, once you know how they're done, they're actually quite straightforward. So stay with me, I will show you how I made this card. So here's what I'm using to make my card today. My card base is a thick white card and it's four inches by 11 and I've scored and folded it at five and a half inches. I'm using lovely lipstick card. Now I've got the full sheet of A4 here. I don't actually need this much. I only need a piece that's maybe about five inches by six inches. Um, so I will be trimming that down. Uh, I've also got some of your ordinary Whisper White, which I'm going to be using for stamping on and also for a little bit of die cutting. Again, the piece I've got here is much more than I'm going to need. Uh, I'm using some leftover scraps of DSP today from different sets. Now, uh, I could have used um, my ordinary... Uh, coloured card and just stamped it and sponged it a bit but I had these pieces lying around so I thought I'd use them so this is a bit from the uh, the Tranquil Textures DSP um, and this side is uh, is like a sponged Birmingham Gala and I want to say this one is from I think is it called Animal Adventures I'm gonna have to check that uh, if I didn't have that, I would probably use some lemon lime twist and maybe some granny apple green. I'm going to stamp using Bella and Friends and uh, Memento Tuxedo Black. I'm going to be colouring in my stamping with my Stampin' Blends, uh, which are alcohol-based, so that's why I'm using the Memento, because that is water-based. I'm going to use my Sizzix Permanent Adhesive Sheets and uh, these lovely things these are new in the spring summer catalogue and we have been asking stamping up for rectangle dies for i don't know how long and they finally given them to us so uh they are called stitched rectangles and uh, i'm going to be using some of those and i also have this i haven't left it out by mistake this is just an ordinary plastic document wall so here's my stamp with Bella and her, her friend, the, uh, the bird. And I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black. And ink up my stamp with lots of light tapping. Okay, now I'm going to be quite careful about how I orient this onto my piece of Whisper White. Because my piece of Whisper White is only just big enough. But, you know, I don't like wasting things. Okay. So I'm giving the ink time to transfer, and that's a lovely image of Bella. Now I also want a few more of the balloons, so I'm just going to stamp those just in little odd corners that I can cut away afterwards. So uh, I've got a number of different stamping blends out here. I don't know whether I'm going to use them all or whether I'm going to go back and get some others, but these are the colours that I think I'm going to use. So I'm just going to uh, crack on and do some colouring. <laughs> I started to uh, cut little Bella out and then I remembered just in time that I want um, an all over adhesive onto the back of this so I've got my uh, my 
adhesive sheet which I've cut a strip off and I am just going to stick my card I'm going to cut out Bella the balloons and the bird I have started trimming my lovely lipstick card down and I'm probably going to need to trim it further, I'll explain why in a moment. And I've gone ahead and started putting my uh, stitched rectangle framelits onto my card and I'm just holding them in place just with a little bit of washi tape. I've used the largest of the uh, rectangles then I missed the next size down and then I used the one after that. So I've got about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch. Uh, of a gap in between them something like that now when I go over to my big shot I'm going to run this through twice I'm going to run it through first of all with the long edge going in to the machine first and then I'm going to turn my card around I'm not going to move my dies I'm going to turn my card around and I'm going to put it through again with the short edge going in to uh, the rollers first uh, the reason why I do that is these particular dies on my particular big shot, uh, they don't cut very well in the middle. Great along the edges, but the middle, not so much. So if I do it that way, um, both orientations will cut properly. Now I want to stress that this is for my machine. All machines are different, and for uh, and for these dies, this is the only die set that I, I actually need to do this and it's because of the um, of the shape of the die basically and the uh, the wear on the rollers on my big shot all right so if you have a similar problem that's how you solve it I'm gonna go away and do that and stop waffling be right back in a moment so I'm back with my lovely lipstick frame and the panel that's come out of the middle. I'm going to keep that because I'm going to use that. I also cut a, a panel of Whisper White using the largest of the uh, of the framelits. I could have just cut a rectangle to size, but since I was over there at the big shot anyway, I thought I was going to do that. And this is going to be the piece that I'm going to build my scene on. So I'm just going to bring in my piece of... Um, my piece of... Uh, DSP couldn't think of what it was called for a moment and I'm just going to line it up onto my uh, my background card so that I've got a little bit of a border all the way around. I'm going to turn that over and I'm going to mark it on the back here and I'm going to cut away the bits that I don't want. Why am I using trying to use that on the side that hasn't got the, the bit of steel in it? That would be wrong. And it would be just like me for my knife to slip and for me to cut a great chunk out of my lovely ruler, which is a fantastic ruler for crafting. It's the, the Tim Holtz ideology one. Um, but they're not cheap. So if I did that, I would have been upset. All right. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that onto my piece of whisper white, which is my panel at the back. And I'm just going to position it in between the uh, the stitch lines. So they're very helpful. And now I'm going to come in about, I don't know, three eighths of an inch from the edge. And I'm just going to cut that skinny little edge away. I said I'm doing it again, he was in the wrong edge of the ruler. Just between those two marks. Just 
cutting it away just at where the paper is. Alright, so I need to tidy that up, which I will do off camera, and I need to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, so I'm going to go away and do that, and uh, then we move on to the next step. I don't want my panel to sit flush onto the uh, I don't want my panel to sit flush onto the eventually this panel is going to sit onto my card base like that three two one okay. eventually this panel is going to sit onto the base of my card something something like that but I don't want it to be flat up against the uh, the card base I need to have room at the back for the uh, for the mechanism to go round and round so I've cut some quarter inch wide strips of lovely lipstick and I'm just going to place them along the, uh, the edge of my panel just like that and I'm I'm going to put one on either side, I'm not worrying about the bits that are hanging over the edge for now. And to make sure that I've got enough room, I'm going to add another layer. Uh, I've used lovely lipstick because that was the colour that I've been using for the frame. Um, you could use any colour that you've got handy, actually. Whisper White would do very well. But I also thought that if you're looking at the card from the side, uh, you might prefer to see the lovely lipstick going most of the way down. Let me push that in so that it's lined up with the edge of the panel there. There we go. Uh, I'm just going to snip away these extra pieces All right. and now I'm going to trim that little slot that I cut earlier on I'm just going to trim that so that it is up against the edge of that bit that I cut out. See, that one didn't work so well, did it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. It's all going to be covered up. Okay. And those two layers of card will make so much difference to the way that the uh, the mechanism works. For the plastic band that Bella is going to ride on, I'm using a, a document wallet and uh, I've started uh, chopping it up. So I've taken away the bit at the edge and I've also trimmed along the, the bottom edge there so that I can open it up into one piece of plastic. Now I used this panel as my guide and it measures out to about eight centimeters by uh, or three and one eighths of an inch that uh, is the width of the band that I'm going to need to cut. And I'm going to take this over to my trimmer and do it, uh, do it over there because I want this to be nice and nice and straight because you are going to see it. Uh, thought about trying to do it with my ruler and my um, and my craft knife, but for me it is too slippery and. Uh, I really want to be concentrating on what I'm doing with the cutting, not worrying about getting my head in the camera. So I'm going to go away and do that be back in just a little while. Right, now I'm going to start assembling the scene. Uh, and I'm going to start off by um, creating some hills for Bella to be hiding behind. So let me, So that's kind of where she's going to be at her at her lowest point. I'm just going to cut some hills. Just I've trimmed my paper down to the same width as the 
as the frame and I'm just cutting a shape out of that and seeing how I like it and uh, she's going to have to come up quite a way so I'm going to make that a little bit a little bit narrower I think a bit more like that and then this piece is kind of going to go in front so I'm going to cut a hill out of that like that and I've decided that I want the uh, the small gingham check up in front so how are we looking now so there she is at her lowest point and she'll rise up kind of like that I think so let's have a look and I'm, I'm sort of doing this by eye I'm kind of eyeballing it I'm trying to see where I like it so I've trimmed my two pieces of paper the way I want them so I'm going to start by putting the smaller piece over the larger one like that and then I'm going to put adhesive round three sides of the bigger piece and bring in my frame and it would help if I put the adhesive on the right side so uh, yeah <laughs> I'm going to wipe that off on my silicone mat bring in the frame again and I'm going to put the adhesive onto the right side of my paper you see I'm so used to putting adhesive onto the wrong side that when I have to do it the other way around I get all confused okay, that won't matter because it's on the back see this is what I get for trying to be clever on a Saturday morning never ends well okay so I've got a little bit sticking out there that's okay because I can just take my scissors and just trim that away and then just as I did for the background piece I've got some quarter inch wide strips of lovely lipstick that are going to go right the way along the top I've already put one layer in place this is the second layer going in and a little off cut and we just pop that piece in place just to give us a little bit of space for the mechanism to work so I'm just laying my frame over the uh, the background piece and I'm going to take a little bird that I stamped and coloured in earlier and I'm just going to peel off the adhesive backing and now I'm going to position this bird where I would like him to be which is going to be kind of about there I think I've trimmed the strip of plastic down so that it goes all the way around the uh, the card backer with about of an inch well about half an inch overlap and I'm going to tape it together so I'm going to put my tape along one edge like so then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put some tape along the other edge and it's quite hard to see but I'm trying to get as near to the edge of my strip of plastic as I possibly can okay. so now I'm going to wrap this around the card and I'm keeping it between the channel formed by my two strips of lovely lipstick which is another one of the benefits of doing it. I want to make sure that's well stuck down before I take the backing off the card, which, off the card, off the tape, which can be tricky. 
Right now, I want to make sure that this is reasonably oh, um, taut, but not super tight. So I'm trying to make sure that it's straight as well, which also helps. Which is, yeah, that looks pretty good. So I can now take the backing of this other piece of sticky tape. Decides that it wants to cooperate with me. And because I'm sticking to a, um, a slick surface, I need to make sure that I don't pull the tape up with the backing, which is what's trying to happen there. Just rub it down a little bit, give it a bit of... Um, bit of encouragement. There we go. That's the thing. And that is now well stuck down. This is the panel that was cut out when I cut my frame. And uh, what I have done is I've stamped my sentiment, I'll be up when you're feeling down, onto a little bit of Whisper White. I've cut it out with another one of the rectangle framelets. And I've put a strip of sticky tape uh, along the top of the panel and this is going to be my um, my tab that I I pull out uh, I've got my my little dog and the balloons already and I've got uh, my uh, dark basic black stamping blends and now I'm going to start arranging things I'm going to start off with Bella herself and I'm just going to take the the backing off Now, if you, if you have um, a Xyron, then you would, uh, you could, uh, you could run your shapes through that, and that would, uh, that would be good. Um, but you really do need, I think, some kind of double-sided adhesive for for this to work properly. All right. So there she is now in the up position. And now I'm going to position the balloons. And with my basic black marker, on the thin side, I'm just going to draw those, join those up to her. So now I've got Bella in the all the way down position, and I'm going to take the backing off my sticky tape, and I'm going to line this up so that it's kind of centred between the two runners. And there's just a little bit of the lo lovely lick lipstick, lovely lipstick, showing at the bottom. One of my nieces used to call lipstick lipstick when she was little. Okay, so when I pull that, that is what happens. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So I've put a little bit of foam tape on the back of the frame. And I'm lining it up with the panel. I don't think the foam tape is kind of 100% absolutely necessary, but I had it hanging around and I thought I would use it. So now if I pull on that, that is what happens. I've decided that I prefer the red balloon to the orange balloon, so I'm just going to um, just cover it up. So as I've been trying out the uh, the mechanism on this card, I've noticed that Bella has got a tendency to catch her little foot there on the edge of that mountain, and I've pressed it down as firmly as I can, but it's still happening. So what I am going to do to try and cure that is I'm going to take a dimensional, and I'm going to keep the adhesive on, um, sorry, the, the backing on one half of it, and I'm just going to slip this underneath. that piece of paper just to keep it um, away from the background and that is now working 
much better for. So now I just need to stick this onto my card base. Uh, now I've come along with a one inch circle punch and just cut a little bit out of the bottom edge of the card there. That's just going to make it uh, easier for me to grab the, um, the pull flap. And I'm reverting to my liquid adhesive for this, largely because I've put my foam tape back in its little box where it lives. And also you do get that little bit of wiggle time. So that is it, or at least that is most of it. Um, I do think it's a little bit plain around here. So if I was doing it again, I would probably put some uh, some clouds in the background to give it a bit of interest. Uh, I may take it away and uh, put um, a kind of a banner across the top with another sentiment just to make it, uh, you know, it, it, just to make it a little bit more balanced. Or maybe I won't. I'll just have to think about it. So that is it for today and thank you very, very much for joining me. Uh, I would love it if you came back and saw me again sometime soon because I do post regularly, usually about twice a week. But for today, that's all and uh, I'd love to see you again sometime soon. Bye bye.